to start clapping, as it usually does when we do this. Hey guys, real quick, thank you so much for watching our content. Next time you're in the market for precision shooting gear, please consider supporting the brands that support our channel to make videos like this one possible. I must say, I really enjoy that little jingle because it means we're gonna sit down and have a little talk even though it's one-sided, just it's a, this is a really good platform for me to sort of just share with you guys what's going on in the in my life, in sort of the life of the channel, business adventures and stuff like that. Now, I highly recommend if you're listening to the audio version of this only on your favorite podcasting app, to check out the intro because I would have sh skipped that out of your version. But the guys watching on YouTube would have seen about a minute and a half preview of the hunt we've just came back from. And man, oh man, was that spectacular. We went back to Koi Koi River Lodge, which is about nine hours out of Cape Town, and we crushed it. Holy moly, did we crush it. So that little preview I edited in under 10 minutes, I just threw in some clips, dropped some music on it, just to, you know, just a little bit of a taste and I actually showed some impacts in that which I generally don't do in the previews so uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that. My challenge with this podcast is going to be not to give you spoilers. Obviously we kind of know how this ends if you follow me on other social media. Yeah but I don't want to share the whole story you know how it unfolded everything that we're going to say for the main YouTube story. Now, speaking of Koi Koi River Lodge, there's actually an opportunity for some of you guys to join me. This is going to be a fastest fingers first, so if you're still listening, head on over to impactproshop.net or click the link below the YouTube video. There's an opportunity for you to come and hunt with us from the 4th to the 8th of May at Koi Koi River Lodge. It's about 20,000 Rand or about 1,100 American dollars. There are rifles there if you need rifles to come and join us for this adventure. It's going to be fastest fingers first, as I said. So the link to join us at Koi Koi, 4 to 8 May 2023, is below this video. I look forward to seeing you guys there. My brother and I are after a very specific animal, again, for that adventure. So I hope you guys get to join us. And I'm very excited to meet the guys that are joining us. There's one or two guys from our Patreon community joining us. And now we're giving you guys the opportunity to join in that too. We are also planning a 2024 trip. So if you want to get in on that, as always, the details are going to go out to our Patreon community first. So if you want to support the channel, the films we make, the tips we give you, please consider joining us on Patreon for that. It really helps us a hell of a lot. Now, my schedule lately has been insane my wife's going like pete you're gonna burn out china bean and i'm going like yes sweetheart i know but in afrikaans there's a saying as it your beer this much you skip and that basically translates to when it's your turn you got to make the most of it and that very much for us is hunting season and i know a bunch of you guys have you know gotten on board with the channel for the precision rifle content but realistically when i look at my top 10 videos on my channel 
70% of them are hunting films. So clearly that speaks to the sort of appeal of the hunting films. And I really, really enjoy making them for the probably the biggest reason, not only the sustainable meat that I'm able to provide my family, but it's the adventure side of it. You know, I'm out in nature. It's a hell of a good time. My brother's there. We're meeting amazing people, very successful entrepreneurs that generally operate these um, these hunting farms. And I get to tap into that mindset too, which is something that I'm super, super keen on. As you guys know, I'm essentially an entrepreneur at heart and I've decided to make my stand in the YouTube space but I really love business and it really floats my boat. So from that element, I really enjoy making those films. Don't worry, the precision rifle content's not going anywhere. But when we go into hunting season, I got to make the most of it. Now, tomorrow morning, I leave on my next hunt for the season. So it's two hunts in two weekends. And in fact, I was actually meant to swap these around. or well, they were swapped around at first. But the place we're going to this weekend, they got hit with massive rainfall lately and they got a lot of damage, a large section of the property was inaccessible due to roads washing away or just insane water levels. And then to top that all off, the neighbor's farm, his dam burst, and then they had like a flash flood on top of an existing flood. So it was just really a sort of bad situation all around. And they'd made so much effort to prep the property for us to come and do a beautiful video of their property. The place is called Groot Fontaine, and it looks spectacular and I cannot wait to go hunting there. For this trip, we're after a sable. Now, I've never harvested a sable before, so I'm super excited. I will be going after a big sable, so hopefully we'll do a mega beautiful mount that'll be in the Impact Pro Shop, and um, I'm very, very excited for this one. We're also going to try and do multiple videos for you guys so that you get to enjoy the trip. I'm taking my wife and my little one with on this trip, so that's very exciting. My little one's been saying the whole week she's going to take her little water pistol and then she's going to shoot the animals and she's going to wash them nice and clean. And when I'm when she's done, <laughs> I can then shoot them so we can make biltong and drovers from them. So I've kind of been prepping her from a young age. You know, this is where meat comes from. It's not like something we just buy in in the shop. Something has to die in order for us to eat meat if we want to eat meat. And for that matter, if you're a vegan too, you're kidding yourself if you think nothing's dying for your kale. But that's not the subject of <laughs> this podcast. And I don't think that's really my audience, to be quite honest. Although we have encountered the odd person that hunting really doesn't do it for them. But that is also okay, you know, each to his own. Um, and yeah, it's, it's really not the end of the world. If you're a precision rifle guy and hunting isn't your thing, then that's 100% fine. But just in our sort of audience, that would obviously be the vast minority of people. Anyway, so the trip we've just come back from at Koi Koi was my first time ever bow hunting. Now, track back a little bit. When I first got into precision rifles, the idea of bow hunting very much appealed to me. And, um, you know, I sort of was a precision rifle shooter. I found Cameron Haynes's videos online. Cam is obviously, if you don't know who Cam is, fantastic bow hunter built like an absolute Greek god. He's a specimen of a human being. And I watched Cam's videos and I was like, wow, that's a cool way to hunt. But obviously it seemed like something so far out of reach. I'd never shot a bow before, nothing. And it was actually, I think it was either in the 2017 or the 2018 trip. It, I think it was 2017 when I went to Oklahoma City. I walked into a bow shop there and I was like, I want... <laughs> The sickest of six setups, and I uh, actually purchased two bows, Hoyt Carbon RX-1 with, you know, the best of the best. We just absolutely loaded this thing. At the time, Bitcoin was absolutely pumping. I think it was trading for like 315,000 Rand, and um, so to splurge a little on a bow seemed like the logical choice, you know. Easy come, easy go, as they say. By the way, a little tangent. Let me know if if you guys would like to know how I started trading Bitcoin and doing that kind of stuff, obviously the crypto space is filled with scams, so we want to make sure not to give any financial advice. But if you want my sort of backstory as to how that all started, I'm, I'm happy to share that with you guys, perhaps in a sort of dedicated crypto podcast. Um, because believe it or not, that helped a ton to get us to where we are now because it gave me that ability to quit my job without worrying too much financially as I built up this channel. 
Um, it also helped me to buy some cool guns. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Anyway, so back to hunting. You know, when I grew up, I very much grew up with, you know, on the back of the Bucky, 30-odd-6 or 20, uh, 243 Winchester. And it was Springbok jumping up in the air because their jaws had been shot off. That was what I grew up hunting with. And it was a horrible experience for me as a youngster. And even I knew back then, like, this is not really what it should be like, you know. Um, so I really wanted to do it right. And that's why I rifle hunted for so long. And what stopped me from doing a bow hunt is I needed the the sort of, the timing needed to be right. And I got a call from Vian a few months, probably about a month and a half ago. And Vian, he's the, the guide at Koi Koi. And Vian said to me, Pete, we've got this roan, by the way. We spent 750,000 rand on her back in 2000, and, you know, around about eight years ago. She's very old. She's given everything she can to the herd. She needs to go. Because from here on in, it's it's downhill for her. And she's getting skinny. We can see she's not eating right. So her teeth are likely worn through. So if we wanted to take something, this would be a very good video to do, like an ethical, you know, because there's no natural predators, and you guys will see this when we make the full film too. You know, the farmers around this property farm with cattle and sheep, and they'll shoot things that will eat the cattle and the sheep. And those things are the same things that will capture the wildlife, okay, when they start getting old and fray and not keeping up with the herd. So her alternative was going to, you know, because of the lack of no natural predators, she was going to die slowly over the course of a year. So we wanted to spare her that. And I said to Vian, like, this could be an opportunity to, you know, bow hunt something. And he said it might very well be because when he saw her and he saw the conditions she was in, he got pretty close to her. So then came the channels like, okay, cool. I haven't really been shooting my bow that much. You know, I'd shoot the odd time my brother would come over, would put the butt up in my garden. I can shoot about 40 meters in my garden, which is quite far, you know, for staying in an estate and I wasn't great at it. To be honest, my brother was much better at it than I was. So basically, over the next month and a half, I shot my bow every single day without fail. I'd go to the gym, just sort of my normal routine. And then every evening while my wife was bathing the little one, I'd be out in the garden and shoot 50, 40 arrows with the bow every day. And who would have thought I actually got better at it pretty quickly? Now, the danger with the bow, as with anything we tend to develop habits you know and if you haven't gotten the right instruction because I've never been taught how to shoot a bow I kind of just figured it out and you will have a tendency of developing bad habits which will be really hard to detrain later and the same thing applies to rifle shooting whether you're shooting a, a magnified optic or if you're a golfer the same principles apply so it was very important that you know you learned the right way now I didn't have that luxury you know, <laughs> I once went to a bow place here where you can shoot indoor archery. And when I pulled out my bow out of the bag, they said, the bow is camouflaged, therefore you cannot shoot in this facility. And I was like, what? <laughs> it was the weirdest thing. It's like uh, some people just don't like making money because I was like quite happy to, you know, get the arrows tuned, you know, do what we need to do, get coaching the works. But because my bow is camo, they just turned me away, which was stupid but uh, anyway so I sort of self-taught then we got to the farm and I had to like sight in my bow we had to just sort of change the I think it's the the drop plate or something on my thing just to match up sort of with the ballistics we put a broadhead on I was shooting the slick trick broadheads that I got back in the day in Oklahoma and when Vian saw them he was like these are the bee's knees so I was like okay cool so the guy at the bow shop obviously sold me the right stuff so thank you very much to the bow shop in Oklahoma for not pulling one over me because you could have very easily done that because I have absolutely no freaking idea what I'm doing anyway so we put up a target at 50 odd meters and I'm going like boy oh boy this feels much farther than I was shooting at home but you know we we get everything dialed in and then we basically head out on our hunt. And that's where I'm going to leave that sort of version of the story for you guys. Perhaps we can pick up a little bit after the fact, like the overwhelming experience it is to harvest something with a bow. It's very, very, I, I just got goosebumps through my, through my upper body. It's, 
it's so different to shooting something with a rifle. And that's something I don't think you can explain to somebody that hasn't harvested something with a bow. It was completely unexpected for me. I didn't expect to feel that way. It's very difficult to describe how I felt after the fact. It was like a perhaps a calmness that came over me afterwards and it lasted hours afterwards. I would say probably lasted the whole day afterwards. And it was just this sort of sense of being mellow at one with nature. You know, it was unbelievable. So I hope and pray that I get that same sensation the next time I shoot something with my bow because it was, I think it was honestly the most calm I've ever been since I can remember. And um, what an experience. And it's all on video and I can't wait to share it with you guys. So this weekend coming up now, we're going to this Grootsleetelfontein, as I said. I've just got goosebumps through my arms again. It was really, guys, it was unfreaking believable. I'm I'm so grateful for that experience and I can't thank the guys from Koi Koi enough. And the way it all planned out at the end, man, it was, wow, it was amazing. So anyway, back to the rifle stuff. This weekend coming up, we're going to Grootsleetelfontein. As I said, we're going after a sable bull. I've never harvested a sable before. I am going to go after a big bull, hopefully Roland Ward level bull. And um, we might try get a Nyala or something like that or some, you know, some other stuff too. Hopefully do a few Springbok too. So we'll try and diversify to give you guys sort of action pack video versus story video. It's always funny for me how, you know, looking at the analytics, I'll upload a video of just, you know, a compilation of kill shots and it's got 2 million views. And then I'll do this beautiful cinematic video with story and everything. And it's got 50,000 views. So it shows you what people want to see. Um, and it's a very difficult one for me. Because at the end of the day, this is a business. And more views equals more money. But I still want to do the storytelling part. Because that really scratches my sort of creative itch, if you will. So I'm excited for this trip coming up. I'm excited to have my wife there and my kitty there. Because that... Generally for me is the hardest part of going hunting is being away from my family because I love my family so much. And, you know, yes, nowadays we can do video calls and stuff like that, but I'm so blessed to have such a good relationship with my wife and my kid. And as soon as like second day on the hunt, I go like, ah, oh, I really want to hold my kitty now, you know. Um, so it's going to be super fun to have them there with us. I think for my wife, though, it might be a little bit of a, a wide awakening to see like, oh, this is actually work. Um, cause <laughs> I think she may be thinking that, you know, we sort of go hunting and it's like a fat jaw and we drink a few beers afterwards. We never drink while we're hunting. We drink a few beers afterwards and, you know, it's just a good time and we happen to film it all. But there's a hell of a lot of work that goes in on the location itself while we're filming, thinking about angles to do things. And, you know, never mind that. Just imagine bow hunting by yourself sneaking up on a group of 30 plus animals so that's 60 eyes scanning for predators now i'm doing it with a guide and a cameraman so it made it super challenging but i still can't believe we got what we got and it's on film so yeah very very cool so i'm i'm excited for this trip coming up i'm excited to share more hunting trips this year we're also going hunting abroad for the first time ever i'm gonna well unless you count namibia might go back to namibia pretty soon too um, I am potentially going to Scotland to shoot a stag in Scotland. So I'm excited about that trip. There's going to be a lot of hunts this year and it's just going to be a fun year of making those kind of films. And I hope you guys enjoy them and I hope you're excited as I am excited. We've also invested heavily again in camera gear. So I want to thank our Patreons and the sponsors of the channel for just helping us level up our gear so we can show you guys, you know, the stuff you'll be seeing in the upcoming videos. Anyway, guys, on that note, I have to start packing for this hunt we're leaving on shortly. So uh, it's cameras, memory cards, charge, everything. It's <laughs> it's going to be a hell of a thing. So we're leaving super early tomorrow morning, and uh, I can't wait to share it with you guys. I was thinking maybe of doing a podcast in the car on the way there with my brother who helps me film, and... Um, yeah, maybe I'll do that because I did also buy some new microphones because in the last video I asked you guys to 
you know, vote on which sound you like better. And you chose the studio mic, which I also like way better. But that other lapel mic was an old mic, so I've basically just put that in a drawer and bought new lapel mics, which is going to help a lot for the hunting and just to get quality audio, even though sometimes the camera might be far away from me. With the microphone mounted on the camera, obviously, as I get further away, the sound just goes away. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, just wanted to give you guys sort of a rough update as to where we are, what our plans are, and um, I hope you enjoyed the preview again on the beginning of this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.